It's Mock Draft Monday, except that it's not. You guys are probably watching this on Saturday. I'm pre-recording some videos, but it's been about 10, 11 days since I've last recorded a Mock Draft, and a lot has changed, and that's not only perception, that is projecting what some of these teams are going to do, and it is tough when it's December 29th as I record this, and a lot's going to change, not only with the order, but trades, players are going to be re-signed, let go, heading to free agency, and everything in between. So this will be a very interesting mock draft. And I can especially say that as a Giants fan, because that's where things are going to start to get crazy. Pick number one, I'm going to have the Giants moving up to the number one overall pick. The Giants are at number five. They're in a weird intermediary where they paid Daniel Jones and there is an out in that contract. After two years, you can cut or trade Daniel Jones and clear up a lot of money. It's structured in such a way that it's really more of a two-year deal than a four-year deal. I think it's pretty clear that Daniel Jones is just not the guy that's gonna elevate a team. You do have big needs on the offensive line, but quarterback is the most important position. And with a team like the Cardinals likely to pass on a quarterback, in my opinion, and a team like the Commanders increasingly likely to take a quarterback, in my opinion, you do not want to let your franchise division rival take the quarterback that you want. So the Giants, who hold the number five overall pick, are gonna trade up with the Bears for number one. Now, we know it costs a lot to move up for a quarterback. And in this case, it's unlikely to be any different. The Giants have an extra second round pick from trading Leonard Williams to Seattle. That could be involved in this trade. However, it's very likely to be, I would say, Force number five, maybe a second round pick, a first in 2025, and probably also a first in 2026. We know the asking price to trade up for a quarterback is usually three first round picks, sometimes a player, sometimes two first round picks and some other picks plus pick swaps. To play it safe though, I would say it's probably three first round picks. Can't trade 2026 20, picks in here, but that's really the asking price for a quarterback. If you guys follow the NFL or the draft, you know that at this point, it costs a lot to move up for that franchise quarterback, that franchise signal caller. But that's exactly what the Giants are going to be doing in this scenario. Trading up to number one, where I think in this spot, we would draft Caleb Williams. Now, Caleb Williams is a tremendous improviser. I've been saying QB 1A and 1B for a while now. It just depends what you want. I think behind a poorer offensive line, Caleb Williams gives you a little bit more. He's just a tremendous improviser. When the play breaks down, Caleb Williams is at his best. And behind the Giants offensive line, the play breaks down a lot. So Caleb Williams is the number one overall pick. Drake May certainly could be. It depends who's picking. Drake May is better within the structure of the offense. So that's making reads, throwing the ball on time and accurately, but is still a very good athlete, just not quite the improvisational wizard that Caleb Williams has shown us to be. They're both very good. I saw a comment on the last mock draft being like, how does Caleb Williams go from a generational quarterback prospect to 1A and 1B? Well, it was pretty close to that the entire time. Drake May is a tremendous prospect, just has not got the hype that Caleb Williams has. And that's part of USC success last year and Caleb Williams winning the Heisman. But we know at this point, awards and team success does not make a prospect. What makes a prospect is how good they actually are and project to be. And Drake May has a great arm, really solid athleticism. He can definitely run and great timing, accuracy, ability to drive the ball downfield and read defenses, go through his progressions. He is a great quarterback prospect. I've got some pushback on this, but I can promise you from everyone that I've talked to and from everything I've seen of Drake May, he would have been the number one overall pick the past couple of years. He would have gone ahead of Bryce Young without question. He's got athleticism, NFL size that Bryce Young did not have. And if Bryce Young was going ahead of CJ Stroud, don't let his play in 2023 change what we think about him as a prospect. Drake May would have been the first pick I feel very confident in that. You're welcome to disagree, but I've talked to a lot of people that share that same sentiment as well. I think Drake May would have been the number one overall pick last year, and he could be this year as well. Cardinals at number two, it continues to be Marvin Harrison Jr. It just makes way too much sense. 
He's probably the best receiver prospect in this class and one of the best ones that we've seen for quite some time. He is a very, very good prospect. Not maybe an incredibly twitchy and explosive guy, but he doesn't really need to be. So fluid, he's got tremendous size, body control, great hands. I've said for a while now, I think the thing that separates Marvin Harrison Jr. is his ability to make the play that you don't expect any receiver to make. He does it. Great hands, ability to adjust the football or adjust to the football in the air. That's body control. He's just a great prospect. And the Cardinals don't have receivers. I like the potential of Michael Wilson long-term. Rondo Moore is a bit of a question mark. They need an actual game-changing receiver. And Marvin Harrison Jr. is certainly that. Commanders at three, I think would in this case take Drake May. I think it's becoming increasingly clear that Sam Howell is not the guy. He will show you like flashes and who knows? He could have a similar Baker Mayfield type arc. I could see that. And I've called Sam Howell baby Baker for a while. I think they have a similar play style, similar ups and downs. And Sam Howell has big time potential still. He probably should not have fallen to the fifth round, even if he played like a fifth round player up to this point. He's shown you some flashes. He's behind a bad offensive line and he makes them looking incredibly bad by taking so many unwarranted sacks. But, you know, he has potential. I just think that we've seen Jacoby Brissett play over him and play better than him. And with a new head coach probably coming in, I'm projecting Ron Rivera to get fired. I would say they are certainly in line for a quarterback. So it's a mix up from Olu Fashanu as it has been. And now both top quarterbacks are off the board as the Patriots sit at four needing a quarterback. And I think that's gonna push a player like Jaden Daniels up the board a little bit. He had a great year, won the Heisman, but more than that, he developed as a passer more and more and more as the season went on. Now, part of that is due to playing with some great receivers, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr. But Jaden Daniels really evolved as a passer this season. And we know if you've watched a second of Jaden Daniels, we know what he can do as a runner. Awesome player. And I think will probably be a top 10 pick when all is said and done. Not sure if he's going to get pushed up into the top five, but if a team wants a quarterback badly enough, it certainly is possible. And that puts the Bears on the clock at number five. I think they're pretty thrilled with the way things have worked out here. And it feels kind of insane that these top tackles are falling, but it's really only a fall out of the top four. It's not insane, I guess. But the Bears, I don't really think need a tackle. It's really... And I've said this the entire draft cycle uh, as offensive tackle had been listed as a need for the Bears. It's not offensive tackle. It's the interior of the offensive line and especially center that's been amended now. But they don't really need tackle so much. You drafted Darnell Wright in the first round last year. I like what you have at left tackle in Braxton Jones. He's a good player. And then with Tevin Jenkins, you signed Nate Davis. You got some pretty good developmental guards. Nate Davis more established, I would say, than Tevin Jenkins is. De Jenkins might even be better at this point, though. Uh, but center, Cody Whitehair cannot be relied on. You need an upgrade, and there's just no center worth taking in the first round. Probably not in the top 50, although we might see one get pushed up. Maybe Zach Frazier, maybe JPJ, the new one this year, Jackson Powers Johnson. Frazier, I think, could be in play for the first center off the board as well, as I said. Cedric Van Pran, maybe as well. Uh, Zach Zinner at guard is... A really good prospect but got a big injury that might push him significantly down the board but I just don't see the Bears taking a tackle in the spot unless you could see Nate Davis maybe moving to center and then sliding somebody inside the guard but I, I just don't see it I just don't think the correct players on the board to make that happen so it's going to be the top rated receiver and that would be in this scenario Malik Neighbors explosive after the catch explosive down the field you can't talk about Malik Neighbors' game without talking about explosiveness. Twitchy athlete, great after the catch, can win deep, good hands, love Malik Neighbors as a prospect. And if you're building around Justin Fields, which this trade down certainly solidifies that, you got him a big time weapon to throw to. That is certainly going to help. And when you have DJ Moore, who's already a great option, who knows if Darnell Mooney is retained as a deep threat. If he's not, which I think could be a possibility, Tyler Scott can step in and be that deep threat. Certainly not Valus Jones, in my opinion. Wasn't really high on him, but I was high on Tyler Scott or where his draft selection ended up being. I think he'd end up being a nice player, but 
deep threat. You got to have like a bona fide starting option. I don't know if that's Tyler Scott quite yet, but Malik Neighbors certainly would be. Chargers at six. I was certainly ready to go Brock Bowers here, but the tackles have fallen. And Olu Fashanu at six to start at right tackle is very, very tempting. I think that's going to be what I do. Brock Bowers is great and would be a big time addition to the offense, a big time weapon. But having a great athletic pass protecting offensive lineman would have to slide over from the left side to the right side. But Trey Pipkins, I'm not sure that you want him starting at right tackle. Rashawn Slater on the other side is great. But I think this is just a spot of, hey, we didn't think Olu Fashanu would make it to this pick. He has. We got to turn in the card and take Fashanu at number six. Titans at number seven, I think maybe would have wanted Fashanu at this pick, but I don't think that they're mad that Joe Alt is still available, and that'll be my selection here. Can't really say too much about it other than the Titans really need to tackle. At both sides, you look at, okay, out of their numerous options, none of them are especially good. And I like their interior, I really do, but when you look at, well, Skaronsky's been up and down, and he's really more of a guard than a tackle, obviously, that's why he's playing guard when he's healthy. But Nicholas petit Frere, Andre Dillard, I'm not sure that these are starting options, and they're your best starting options right now, probably, when you talk about, like, young players that can be developed. Dillard, obviously, is actually into his mid to late 20s now at this point. Former first-round pick, just never really had it. Alt can step in right away and really help you make this transition to build up the trenches the way the Titans are trying to do. Skaronsky last year, Joe Alt this year, be a big step in the right direction. Bears at eight. Man, things worked out so well with Malik Neighbors at five and getting a bunch of picks from the Giants. I like the idea of Brock Bowers here. I like the idea of beefing up the defense. So I do this about every time and to me, I, I don't really know how I can mix it up because I just, I have such a strong feeling that Dallas Turner will be the first defensive player off the board. This could end up not being true, but he's so athletic. He's such a good, solid player on film. When you talk about a guy that is incredibly athletic, you usually don't think about a guy who's very good in the run game, but he is. He's a really solid pass rusher and he can potentially be even more. He's such an amazing athlete. Should test unreal. He's got the size at six foot four, 245. Gonna get even bigger, probably, you'd think, at the NFL level. Maybe, you know, low 250s. Still keep that athleticism. Dallas Turner's great. And I think he's really good value at eight. Generally, about the area he goes for me, though. Jets at nine. It's probably gotta be tackle or receiver for me. Brock Bowers is actually intriguing, though. That's something I didn't really consider too much. But is Brock Bowers so good that you would just say, hey, Aaron Rodgers, who's got a great history of throwing to tight ends, instead of going with a wide receiver, do we take a tight end to be the focal point of the offense? I like their tight ends. I don't love their tight ends, but I, I like them. Brock Bowers, though, is on a different level. And I'm kind of talking myself into it. If you don't know Brock Bowers, it's not a typical tight end. This is, in my opinion, as good of a tight end as we've seen since Kyle Pitts and maybe even better. Some of that may be recency bias. Kyle Pitts was a better athlete and really a unicorn, as we always hear at the position. Just so big, so fast, good route runner. Brock Bowers is a great run blocker with solid size and great speed. He's 6'4", 240, that can move defensive ends in the run game and can run down the field with anybody. He eliminates pursuit angles that tight ends don't typically do. And with Aaron Rodgers, I think this fit is really, really fun. Could be a wide receiver, Romo Dunze, maybe Keon Coleman, maybe somebody else. And it's a really good tackle class. If you want to tackle at that spot, there are some great ones. Buaga, Latham, Mims, all could start at right tackle. But Brock Bowers, to me, I thought was just too good to pass up for Aaron Rodgers. And ended up mixing it up and going Brock Bowers. But very easily could be a tackle. If you wanted to tackle there, I certainly would not blame you. 
Falcons at 10. Might want a quarterback. Don't think Desmond Ritter's it. Arthur Smith is expected to come back. With these available quarterbacks, again, who even ends up coming out? Knicks and Penix have no choice. They're 30 years old. Jadir Sanders probably goes back. Carson Beck is going back. It's already been announced. J.J. McCarthy might be on the fence, may come out, may not. Quinn Ewers seems like is probably going back to Texas, but if Texas makes a run, and I'll be at the Sugar Bowl in a couple days when you see this, Quinn Ewers might win a national championship and go to the NFL. It's a possibility, I would guess, but I don't know. I, um, I don't want to jinx anything, even though I don't believe in that. I also I don't want to do anything. Anyway, I don't really see a quarterback that's worth taking at this spot if you're Atlanta. So you'd probably pivot. I'd look on the edge. And Leatu Latu is great. Jared Verse, Chop Robinson. I mean, probably a little early for JT Tuimoloau. And there are some great options on the board too. Chris Braswell, Adisa Isaac. There is still no Landon Jackson. I don't know where he is, but Landon Jackson should be in here unless he announced that he's going back. Did I look at that in the last mock draft? Seems like a decision has not been made yet from my research just a minute ago. So I don't know. I think Leatu Latu is a good pick at number 10. Latu is another first round edge from UCLA. Tack McKinley being the last one. That's a fun parallel, although not if you're a Falcons fan, probably. Latu is the best overall edge in this class, in my opinion. I think he's the best player day one. He, as I say in every mock draft, always falls a little bit because one, this is an offensive draft. That's something to know right away. But had to medically retire. I say it in every mock draft, but it's true. That could hurt his stock a bit, but he's so good that he might get elevated up the board. Best hands in the draft. That's what I'll say. Great array of pass rush moves. Great hand placement. Plays with good leverage. Not exactly the bendiest edge rusher, but has significant bend. Enough to get the job done. And when we talk about bend, if you're not familiar with that term, it's really about ankle flexion, how flat you can make your body as you turn the quarter or turn the corner to the quarterback uh, around the tackle. So that's typically a trait you'd look for with edge rushers, just because the quicker you can turn the corner, the quicker you can get to the QB. That's bend, essentially, uh, for the layman. Really simplified. But um, there's not a whole ton to it when talking about it, but it's just, it's it's very helpful as a pass rusher. Latu's got a decent bit, but not overwhelmingly so. His hands are his best asset, and they are very, very good. Saints at 11. Quarterback would certainly be in play. I think tackle as well. The Saints are always a team that comes up and I'm like, what do we do? Because I could also see a receiver. I can see an edge rusher. I could see an interior defensive lineman to combine with Brian Burns. I like that idea. There are so many different ways they could go. Quarterback would be at the top of the list of needs. But again, I don't think a quarterback's going to go in this range if Jaden Daniels is off the board. I think these first three, Williams, May, Daniels are guaranteed first round picks at this point. That's how I feel about it. Daniels maybe could fall out, but I doubt it. Of the rest of these guys, in order of how I think they could go, and I'm going to ignore Carson Beck and Sanders. We'll throw Quinn in there, I guess. In order of likelihood of going in the first round, I think it goes J.J. McCarthy, who I know people don't like, but I think NFL teams we know like him. Processing, athleticism, arm talent. That gets you elevated. J.J. McCarthy has it. And he's younger than Knicks and Penix significantly. Then after that, it probably does go Bo Nix, if I'm ignoring Quinn Ewers. But it still probably would be Bo Nix, to be honest. Ewers just a little bit too raw right now. And then Penix. Penix, injury history old also, but the injuries are what really brings him down. I just don't think that there's really a surefire first round pick among those guys. So what do you do if you're the Saints? I think you pivot to best player available. I think last time I gave them Roma Dunze, and that certainly could be best player available. I'm going to go with a tackle this time, and there's a very good conversation to be made for JC Latham being the best player available at that spot. He is a massive huge right tackle with great strength solid athleticism and if you're drafting him you're probably moving him to left tackle which is a little bit scary of the guys that could make that left tackle transition i would say a marius mims is your most likely to 
Maybe Fatanu gets up a little bit if you, if you keep him a tackle. He's expected to move inside to guard. There's a possibility. But Latham is just really good. Is that the best fit, though? Not if you want to leave Ramchek at right tackle. It's, it's a bit of a gamble. I don't know that the Saints would make this gamble, but tackle certainly in play. And I'm not saying Latham can't do it. It's just... He's played right tackle, so I, I, it's a little bit difficult to say. He was expected to play left tackle this season until Alabama flipped Caden. Caden Proctor? I think it's Caden Proctor. I know it's Caden. Caden Proctor. Caden. Yes, Caden Proctor. I, 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 that sounded like a safety name. I think I'm always combining Josh Proctor from Ohio State, but yeah, Caden Proctor. Caden Proctor was a late flip from Iowa, and then he just ended up inserting as a starting left tackle as a true freshman. But Latham... Could maybe do it. I don't know. It's a bit of a gamble, but he's certainly a really good tackle prospect. Just big difference from right and left tackle. Everything's kind of reversed. Packers at 12. I think they would take a tackle, but right tackle looks pretty good with Zach Tom. Left tackle would be in play, but it's the same type of conversation with Latham. Like, would you take a Marius Mims here? Well, I think they might. Judy loves his developmental athletes. Mims is certainly that. Played right tackle. Could probably play left tackle. Really good athlete. That's what pushes him up the board. Injury hurt him in 2023, no pun intended. But for David Bakhtiari, can't really rely on him. I like Amarius Mims as a future starting left tackle. He gets pushed up the board a bit. This draft is offense, and that certainly includes tackles. Tackles, I think, are going to be flying off the board in this draft. Tackles, receivers, quarterbacks. It'll be an interesting one. Raiders at 13. They're winning under Antonio Pierce. So quarterback starts to look a little bit less likely because who are you going to take? Is this the J.J. McCarthy spot or do you opt to do something else? For me, I like the idea of Johnny Newton. He's a bit undersized. Again, I say that in every video. 6'2", 295, maybe a bit closer to 6'1", though. But really good player. Gets upfield in a hurry. I think people are going to fall in love with him during the draft cycle. And, you know... I think he's a first-round pick for sure. I think he probably goes in the top 20, but does he go in the top 15? It's tough to say for sure, but I definitely like the potential of it. Outside of that, I think corner is certainly in play for the Raiders, and I like the idea of giving them Nate Wiggins. I think he ends up being the first corner off the board. Best combination of size and speed in this draft and arm length. Plays with a great motor, good ball skills. I really like Nate Wiggins as a prospect. And I think he is, again, probably the first corner off the board. The Raiders could use a lot of everything on defense. I gave him an edge last week. Um, Malcolm Kuntz is really emerging this year. I didn't really account for that. And even though they drafted Tyree Wilson, he's a guy that can move inside and outside, depending on what you want to do. And Max Crosby is obviously a freak. But you probably don't need to take an edge rusher in the first round, even if you do in maybe the mid-rounds. It's never a bad idea to have more edge rushers, but... In the first round is probably a little bit rich, so I, I made a mistake last week, but interior defensive line, corner, certainly in play. Their defense needs to be improved, and Nate Wiggins is a potential CB1 type player, and I really, really like him. Here he is at 13. Broncos at 14. Well, it makes it a little bit easy to just go Johnny Newton right now, and I... I don't know. I might just go Romo Dunze. I, I think there's just too many questions with Jerry Judy and too many question marks with the Broncos offense as a whole. I could totally recognize taking a quarterback here, but again, I, I've talked about it. I don't know that there is one that would be drafted. Like maybe the Vikings would at 15, maybe the Raiders would at 13, maybe the Broncos would at 14, maybe the whoever would whenever down the board. It could happen, but I just, I don't feel good enough about it. So I'm not really going to be doing that this mock draft. Maybe down the board, maybe somebody trades back up. Could happen. But uh, Roma Dunze, wide receiver one capabilities. Great height, weight, speed, deep threat. Gets down the field. Great hands. I mean, not too bad after the catch either. I love Roma Dunze. It is a great receiver class. And with all the questions about Jerry Judy every year, and him maybe not liking Denver and how much he's utilized. Romo Dunze is a really big-time weapon. I know Russell Wilson's expected to get cut. You don't really like the idea of Jarrett Stidham being the guy at quarterback. However, at the same time, 
I don't know that there's that there's a quarterback worth drafting here. So Roma Dunze ends up being the selection, and it's a good one. He's a really, really good player that has fallen a bit just because other teams need other things more. And he could have gone easily to the Titans, maybe even to the Chargers, right? To the Jets, to the Bears if they didn't take neighbors, and maybe even above neighbors. Could have maybe even gone to the Falcons to be a decoy for Jonu Smith. The Saints, probably not to the Packers at this point, well, we know. Probably not to the Raiders, but... He's just a really good player that became available. And that's sometimes what the draft is. We saw that earlier with Brock Bowers. It's not always, oh, this is just, a, this has to be the guy. It's sometimes, hey, we didn't think this guy'd be available. And he is, he's higher on our board. We're drafting him. And that's how you have some of these picks that you don't expect a team to make, but highest player on their board. And they go, wow, we didn't think we'd get him. And you hear GM say that sometimes. We thought this guy'd be gone and he wasn't. So we picked him. And that's, you know, kind of the way this goes sometimes. But yeah, receiver could be a need for Denver anyway. What do you do about quarterback? Hey, round two is a beautiful thing. Could have some options. Could have some options for sure. Not saying it's Bo Nix or Nemina Click. Could have been any of those guys, really. Except for Carson Beck. He's going back to Georgia. At number 15, have the Vikings. Daniil Hunter's so good. DJ Wanham's played well. None of those guys are guaranteed to even be there. Marcus Davenport, same deal. I think Edge is probably at the top of the list of needs, in my opinion. Talking about what we talked about at quarterback, factored in. I'll go Jared Verse. Great, powerful hands, good athlete. Still evolving as an edge rusher, a former Albany transfer. Good player. Think he's going to be a first-round pick. Right around 15 feels about right for Jared Verse. Really, really solid. And there's just a lot of uncertainty with the edge position right now in Minnesota. Verse can help you solve some of that. Then we have at 16, the Arizona Cardinals via the Houston Texans taking their second pick of the draft. I like corner here quite a bit. I think corner certainly in play. Took Marvin Harrison Jr. at number two. So I just like corner. And I've been pushing Terry on Arnold up the board. I still like the idea of that. And I'm going to make Arnold the second corner off the board in this scenario. He's got decent size. Not as big as his teammate Kool-Aid McKintree, but plays very different brand of cornerback feisty, aggressive. These are traits that defensive back coaches and defensive coordinators love. A cornerback that can get after it. And that is Terry and Arnold when you watch him. And he's a really, really fun player to watch. Just flies around the field, good ball skills. And when a guy like Kool-Aid McKinstry comes into the year with so much hype, offensive coordinators know about him, right? They really do. And they're going to design game plans that don't target CB1 as much. That's when you target Terry and Arnold. He was targeted a lot. When you watch him, when you watch a DB in general, it can get a little bit boring if you're not seeing the ball being thrown there as often, right? Although, of course, a lot of the reps where nothing happens in terms of getting the football are the most important ones for a corner. You see how they shadow, see how they stay in phase. If they don't get targeted, that's a good thing. But he was thrown at a lot, and he rose to the occasion is my long-winded point there. Really like him. Think we'll be a first round pick. Steelers at 17. It's pretty much been a tackle for me here. And based on the players available, it will continue to be. I'm going to Lisa Fuaga. Power run oriented, mauling right tackle. Bang. Sounds like an instant starter. Roderick Jones at left tackle for the future. You got your tackles of the future. It just, it feels too perfect. And when you look at other positions they could draft, I think about corner. I think about linebacker. And I would say tackle might be at the top of those list of needs. And it's just a good one's available. That feels like a great scheme fit. Now, Kool-Aid McKinstry could be as well. Long arms, press man corner. Would you project that's the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? And of the guys that fit that mold, TJ Tampa's probably the best overall just press corner in the draft. But you don't need to take him in the first round. Although he might. We see corners get elevated so many times in the draft. Wow, can you believe that guy went there? DJ Tampa could be one of those sneaky, wow, this guy ended up being a first-round pick. That could happen, but I don't think it's 17. Although, we'll see. A lot of time between now and the draft. At 18, have the Cincinnati Bengals and Johnny Newton's just fallen perfectly here. They need an interior defensive lineman, especially when they can get pressure on the quarterback, and that is Johnny Newton. Could be a tackle here as well. Certainly could be. Batanu, if you're going to leave him at tackle, 
Jordan Morgan, Patrick Paul, Tyler Guyton, all quite good. Barton is really expected to move inside to guard. We'll have to see if that comes to fruition. Kingsley Suamataia, I think he's going to be a first round pick as well. Or certainly the possibility of that. At number 19, have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A lot of needs here for them. And I don't really know that quarterback is one of them. Baker Mayfield's playing well enough. You're down the board enough. I don't think you take a QB. Could go receiver. And I, Mike Evans is great. Chris Godwin's great. The long-term futures of those guys is a bit more in question because of age, health, and contracts when you, you know, look at their situations collectively. But what do the Bucks do? Pass rush, bad. Pass rush, bad. DBs, left out to dry as a result. I want to improve the pass rush, and I'm going to do that with Chop Robinson. Explosive edge rusher, and you're building a track team on the defensive line. You look at their first round pick last year, and now this year, it's twitched up guys that can get to the quarterback, and that is a recipe for success a lot in the league. Robinson, twitched up guy, still developing as a pass rusher, but as athletic pretty much as anybody in this class, and that includes Dallas Turner up there at the top. At number 20, have the Indianapolis Colts. I like the idea of a Braylon Trice or JT Tuimolo Al. I like the idea of even investing in the secondary a bit more. I think this could be a corner. Kool-Aid McKinstry is available. I'm going to go Kool-Aid McKinstry. And I know everyone loves the, uh, they, they hate when I do the, like, just pick a player short analysis and then leave it. So I know people skip around in these videos. They skip to their teams. They want as much in-depth analysis as I can provide for that time. So here's what I'll say about Kool-Aid McKinstry and Chris Ballard. We know Ballard likes taking the height, weight, speed freaks. Not sure McKinstry is quite in that realm. Now he's got the size, no question. About 6'1", 6'2", 200 pounds. I think he's going to run fairly well, but I don't know that he's going to blow you away. I don't think he's going to be in the low, you know, four threes. He might get into the four fours. I think he might be a four or five flat guy, which is still pretty good, especially at that size, right? But he's got the size. And you look at a guy like Julius Brents that was drafted a year ago at a Kansas State. Kool-Aid McKinstry kind of fits a similar mold, doesn't quite have the same size that Brents did, but is in that similar mold and could be your cornerback duo that you're looking for. Kenny Moore in the slot, such a great player. I like the safeties, especially some of the developmental ones. Kool-Aid McKinstry could be a boundary starting corner with, I guess, Julius Brents on the field side with his, I would say, increased athleticism. Seahawks at 21. This is always a tough one for me. I never really know what to do with the Seahawks. I like offensive line in this spot, but I don't know that I feel strongly about that. Interior defensive line, sure, but there's not really any available. What do you do here if you're Seattle? I think, again, you just take best player available. And for their needs, it's probably just Troy Fatanu. I know keeping him local, I've made this pick 100 times, it just feels like the right thing to do. Slide him inside to guard. Bang. He's expected to move inside to guard. He's a really solid tackle with shorter arms. Generally, those type of guys do move inside to guard. Really good player. And for Seattle, I just feel like it's a really good fit for their team needs. Plus the player, keeping him local. Too many things line up here especially when there's not a great interior defensive lineman available. Maybe they trade back, look at a linebacker. It's not that great of a linebacker class either. You're looking at Edrin Cooper and Jeremiah Trotter. Peyton Wilson is maybe the best of them all, but injury concerns might push him down the board. Tommy Eichenberg is a pretty good player as well, but these are probably not guys that get drafted in the first round. Maybe Edgerin Cooper gets moved up. I can see Trotter being a first round pick. I doubt Peyton Wilson because of the injury history, as I said, but... I don't know that these guys are first round picks. Seattle, I guess, could trade out of this spot altogether, but they also could upgrade their offensive line and Fatanu to me just makes a ton of sense. Jags at 22, you gotta protect Trevor Lure and seeing him get injured as routinely as he's been, he's just so painful to watch and there are really good offensive linemen available. Graham Barton kind of has been the name I've gravitated towards with the Jags just because of his blend of athleticism and ability to move inside and outside again projects to be a guard because of his shorter arms but could potentially even stick a tackle depending on which team drafts him but barton is a really solid player that helps your offensive line in a major way you cannot 
have Trevor Lawrence off the field as much as he has been in the past couple of weeks. Now, injury hadn't been a problem for him before. You don't want it to become a lingering issue. Rams at 23. They could go anywhere. This is a team who I, I can't even believe they're as good as they have been this year. The Rams, and this is not to say as a collective, but at, from just a roster perspective, this is not a very good team. I have no problem saying that. I know they're winning. Sean McVay is a great coach. Matthew Stafford's playing at a great level. Gotten a lot out of Puka Nakua. All that. Whatever. Doesn't matter. That matters a little bit. But uh, Cooper Cup, he's back. This offense is firing on all cylinders. No question. But they, they lack top-tier talent on the offensive line. Certainly on defense. But they're winning anyway. Congrats to the Rams. But you could take anything, is my point. Because you do lack a lot of talent. I probably wouldn't take a receiver. But just about everything else is in play. Probably not a quarterback either. Matthew Stafford's just good enough right now. You want to try and capitalize on his window. So what do you take? It's probably just the best player available. I like the idea of a corner here. I like the idea of an edge rusher. I like the idea of so many different things. Tackle, certainly a possibility. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to show some love to Chris Braswell. I'm pushing him up the board. Here's why. He is a really athletic edge rusher, 6'3", 255, that I think can work as a 3-4 outside linebacker that can occasionally drop. The Rams like to do that, except instead of dropping back Hoyt, who's 300 pounds, you can drop back Braswell, who can move a little bit better out in space, but also get to the QB. He's a good prospect that's kind of being undersold a bit in this process. I don't know if he ends up being a first-round pick, and it's still early, but I think he has the makings of a first-round pick, productive, athletic, versatile, that feels like a guy that could be in the first round. Braswell is really explosive, really good, and feels like a good fit with the Rams. When I look at Braylon Trice and JT Tuimoloau and Jack Sawyer, these are guys that to me are 4-3 defensive ends that just don't fit quite as well as a Chris Braswell does. Now, you could go corner, but the top three are off the board now. So do you take Cooper to Gene to just play him anywhere? I like that. Definitely do. Kamari Lasseter, Kalen King, Quinion Mitchell. These are guys that could be in play. Maybe even Ennis Rakestraw. I know uh, Trevor Sigma is really high on him. That's why he's got him pushed up here on his board. But uh, I like the idea of Chris Braswell here. Pushing him into the first round. Really good player. Really good player. At 24, we have the Buffalo Bills. And I've been receiver for them a lot. I just feel like they need a bona fide number two. And I've really dropped Keon Coleman so far. Did I do this last time? I think Keon Coleman has to be the guy. Just best player available at this spot. And it pains me not to go Cooper to Gene. I would love to go to Gene there. He is so good. One of the best players in the class period, probably. But Coleman is a big-time weapon for Josh Allen. The offense needs to be more functional. Keon Coleman helps that happen. 6'4", 215. Super athletic. Returns, punts at Florida State, but is the best jump ball player in the class, bar none. When Josh Allen needs somebody to make a play, Keon Coleman down there somewhere, you know what I mean? Give him a shot, and he will likely come down with it. I mean, it's not 50-50 balls with Keon Coleman, it's 80-20, it's 90-10. He's a freak, and the Chiefs probably not super thrilled about that, but Brian Thomas Jr. is available, Tez Walker. I think this is a receiver. You need more weapons for Mahomes, and there are some really, really good options. I keep liking the pairing of Brian Thomas Jr. I'm not going to stop it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. He's got great size and tremendous speed. He's a long strider that gives you a deep threat in your offense. He is better than Marquez Valdez-Scantling Jr. long term. No question. He catches the football. Marquez Valdez-Scantling annoys me, and I'm not even a Chiefs fan. We need to upgrade. Don't even get me started on Kadarius Toney, but Thomas would not play the same role. This is starting X receiver. He's an outside guy that can win down the field, catch the football. He is an awesome player. And the pairing with Patrick Mahomes is not going to be fair. He's just, he gets down the field way too easily with long strides. I mean, that's it. Cowboys at 26. I think receiver would be in play for them as well. Maybe even DB. Cooper DeGene, versatile guy that can do a lot of different things. That's a fun option. 
but I think they end up taking an offensive lineman, and you got some good ones. Now, depending on how you want to play this, you could move Tyler Smith out to tackle and take a guard, but a lot of these top guys that can move inside the guard are off the board. So you might just opt to keep Tyler Smith at left tackle where he's or left guard where he's one of the best in the league this year and take a tackle to replace either Terrence Steele on the right side or Tyron Smith eventually on the left side. And he just has not been able to stay healthy over his career anyway. So take a tackle. Who's the best one available? Well, it might be Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma. TCU transfer, really good athlete, potential starting left tackle for a team. And now you got the Tylers at left tackle and left guard, potentially. Texans at 27. Who would have guessed that? Well, the Browns are killing it with Kevin Stefanski and Joe Flacco. I mean, the Joe Flacco renaissance is unbelievable, but it's real and it's true and it's happening. And don't let January Joe get hot. We're a couple days away from, my, or from when I'm recording this and when you're probably watching it, it might be January already. January Joe is a real thing. AFC North on notice, AFC on notice. I'd be worried. But yeah, Texans on the clock, not the Browns. And I will extend this to two rounds eventually, get the Browns and Panthers picks. But Texans at 27, you got some options. I'd probably look to go defense. I like their offense. I like their receivers enough. And when Tank Dell comes back, it you know, it's not even a thing. I'll tell you who could be interesting here is Jatavion Sanders. But we're going to go defense. Who's the best defensive player available? Probably Cooper DeGene. He's just a versatile guy that you can do a lot with. I think it's one of those spots of, hey, this is just the best player. We're going to figure out what to do with him, whether it's slot corner or safety or boundary corner. Cooper DeGene is really, really good and worth a first round pick, if not even higher than top 27, right? Top 20, top maybe even 15 when it's all said and done. Although I think injury might hurt him in the draft. Lions at 28. So guard is actually more of a need for them than I initially thought because, well, injury and contract situation. Now, Glasgow's a good player. Jonah Jackson's been banged up. Guard could absolutely be in play, but I just really don't know which one you draft at this spot. The interior offensive line group is just not really worth drafting in the first round. I, I just don't think any of these guys really get pushed up into that conversation. Maybe Jackson Powers Johnson but I don't really see it. I think it's kind of the same thing with John Michael Schmitz last year and Joe Tipman, where these guys might get talked about near the top of the, or near like the back end of the first round, top of the second, but ultimately fall a bit. And I think that's probably what ends up happening this year. So what do you do? I think you probably pivot and just go best player available. I like the idea of taking a boundary corner with athleticism here. Winion Mitchell is the guy, the Toledo Torpedo. Fun nickname for him. I'm, I'm starting that now. I had it for Kareem Hunt, and then it became too real. And then now it's Quinion Mitchell. That's what I'm going with. Lions get a boundary corner with great athleticism, good size. You know, he's 6'1", 6 6 foot 6'1", 6 with 4'3", verified speed. You like that. That's somebody that can start on the boundary. And don't be afraid because it says Toledo. You're looking at the player, not the school, and he is a shadow. Uh, for a lot of these receivers. And I get that they're not SEC or even Big Ten receivers. Sometimes they are. You know, Toledo plays in Big Ten teams. But uh, Mitchell does a really good job and I think could end up being a first-round pick based on overall athleticism. I'll include size in that. Dolphins at 29. I'm just, I'm taking a tackle here. I'm all about it. And the Dolphins, to me, feel like a Kingsley Suamataia team. So do the Eagles really good athlete and this might be just four tackles to end the video by the way in a row i know that seems wild but listen either they all need tackles in the case of the dolphins and niners even with trent williams you're looking at a guy that's 38 39 years old right or teams that could use a tackle to develop like the eagles and the ravens tackle is going to end up being a need either can't rely on guys because of injury or have expiring contracts you look at ronnie stanley and morgan moses you could have some holes to tackle. So I might just go three offensive tackles out of these final four teams. And we really only have three offensive tackles for these four. So somebody's got to do something different. 
And I think the Eagles end up taking an offensive tackle, even though they have other needs. But we'll mix it up. I've been giving them offensive tackle. Sometimes I give them corner. Maybe give them a wide out this time around. Get a third option in the mix. That would be really, really good for their offense. So let's go. Let's go. Kingsley Suamataia to the Dolphins. Really big and athletic tackle. Developmental guy, probably. But could be a potential starter for the Dolphins sooner rather than later. Eagles, we're going to go receiver. Best fit for the Eagles at this point is probably Emeka Abuka in the slot. Probably would be talked about a little bit higher if not for being banged up in 2023. Really good option to combine with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. Now you got some great receivers. You can still run the ball because your offensive line's crazy. Although I think they end up drafting offensive linemen to develop. And then 49ers at 31. You need offensive line desperately. Patrick Paul is an awesome option. Has been locked down for Houston at left tackle over the past couple of seasons. And then, and again, you need tackle badly. Trent Williams old, right tackle, not maybe so good. 32 with the Ravens. We're going to wrap things up with Jordan Morgan. Maybe could potentially move inside to guard as well. Talked about that, but I think he probably stays at tackle. And again, the Ravens certainly could use offensive tackle in the future. So that is the Mock Draft. Mock Draft Monday on a Saturday, probably. But thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.